Welcome to the Diversion Authority Finance Committee for October 26th. I'd like to call the meeting to order, and I'd ask Don to do a roll call, please. Mayor Dardis. Here. Dr. Mahoney. Here. Mr. Peterson. Here. Mr. Jacobson. Mr. Jacobson. Ms. Gayhart. Here. Ms. Johnson. Here. Mr. Redlinger. Mr. Steen. Here. Mr. Pepcorn. Here. Mayor Carlson. Here. Mr. Reitz. Here. Ms. Madriga. Here. Quorum is present. Thank you, Don. Next order of business is uh, item number two on your agenda as you approve the minutes of September 21st, 2022. They are in the packets and they have been distributed. So. Steen moved to approve. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of September 22nd, 21st. 2022 as distributed. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Item number three is, is the approval of the order of the agenda. Again, it has been distributed for October 26. It is in your packets. Move to approve. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Is there a second, please? Second. I have a second. We have moved second to approve the order of the agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number four is the approval of the bills. We'll call on Terry Gayhart. Uh, you, and that is an attachment, is on page five, and it has been distributed. Total of the bills received through October 18th totaled 9.2 million. The largest of the bills was from Cass County Joint Water Resource District in the amount of 7,649,000 and from Clay County, 1,381,000 followed by a number of um, small, smaller bills totaling $174,000. Thank you, are there any questions? Questions? Commissioner Steen. Move to approve the bills. Thank you, sir. Is there a second, please? Second. And moved and seconded. Uh, Don, would you please call a roll on this one? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Ms. Gayhart. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mayor Carlson. Yes. Mr. Reeds. Yes. Ms. Madriga. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Item number five is the finance report. Again, we call on Terry Gayhart for that report. It's on page 21, and it has been distributed. Um, the financial report shows that we have $143 million in cash, $7 million in receivables, and a minor amount in prepaid expense, vouchers and payables in the $5,600,000 million, uh, $600, uh, bringing us to a net uh, net position of 145,000, dollars A little better. Thank you. Is there any questions on the finance report? A motion, please, to accept. Mr. Chair, Peterson, motion. Thank you, Commissioner. Then move. Is there a second, please? Steen seconds. We have a motion and a second to approve the finance report as presented. Um, is there any discussion? Hearing none, Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Gayhart. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mayor Carlson. Yes. Mr. Reitz. Yes. Ms. Madriga. Yes. And that is everyone. Thank you, Don. Item number six uh, is the executive director's financial report. Uh, Mr. Paulson is not with us today. We'll call on Martin Nicholson for that report. Thank you, Chairman Dardis, members of the committee. Uh, have no fear. There's a number of very competent individuals sitting over there in the back that if you have detailed questions, I'm going to rely on. So ask away. Uh, I'll turn to them. But uh, I will just briefly go through the annual revenue status, um, 
taking questions on these slides if you have details. But uh, up on the screen, the current month is $16,479,000 in revenue, fiscal year to date, um, $103,576,000 against a planned approved budget of $194,839,000. That's your revenue uh, picture. On the level one summary of costs, uh, cost to date through 9.30 of 22 is uh, 72,404,038 um, against a budget of 194,839,090, leaving a balance remaining of 122,435,052. Uh, moving on to the level two detail, uh, this has been in your packet. Um, there are uh, a number of pages here won't go through anything in detail unless there are questions that you have with respect to the, the line items. Uh, the last page is the Diversion Authority Operations Budget Summary. I'll just note on that one that there's been a request for additional line item uh, detail on an administrative budget, and we will work with Joel when he gets back to develop such detail and, and put that forward on the 2023 cash budget approach. Summary for cost to date is 779732 with a remaining budget of 484373. And with that, that concludes the uh, financial report for the executive director. All right, questions? thank you, Mr. Nicholson. Is there any questions? No questions? All right, moving on. That's for information only. We'll move on to item number seven, which is contracting actions. Again, we'll call on Mr. Nicholson. So there are um, five contracting actions uh, in your packet. Um, Mr. Shockley has the detail on uh, the first item and the third item, I believe, uh, uh, Mr. Dardis, you and I were speaking, Chairman Dardis speaking just before the meeting. Uh, it's been asked that the WPA a intelligence item has been pulled for uh, additional detail. So I, I believe you've requested that be that be pulled for the day. Uh, and then uh, I'm happy to answer questions on GA Group and Grand Farm Research and Education Initiative contracts. Thank you, Mr. Nicholson. Uh, correct. Uh, number, item number two, I did ask that it be pulled for additional uh, detail and information uh, prior to it being presented to us. I wanted a, uh, a more detailed uh, breakdown of what's, what it is. So, well, uh, moving on, uh, we'll move on to item number one under the contracting actions. And Mr. Shockley is going to handle the AON Risk Services Central New Services Agreement. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Aon agreement is just an update to their uh, risk services agreement and continues their advising for the authority. Uh, we've been using, uh, utilizing them as an insurance advisor for the P3 contract for uh, the, during the procurement. So it's just a renewal of their MSA. Thank you, sir. Any questions for Mr. Shockley on item number one? We'll move on to item number three. And again, Mr. Shockley, again, we pulled number two. So Mr. Shockley, would you share with us your thoughts on number two, uh, three? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. So the next item is uh, related to the uh, program advisor services agreement. Uh, this is the master service agreement. Um, we uh, authorize work to be performed. It's, this is Martin's contract. Uh, to be performed by task orders annually. There's actually no cost associated with the master services agreement. There was a request today to uh, change that to a two-year contract, which uh, Martin has agreed to. And so uh, I would recommend approval with uh, changing it to a two-year term. Questions for Mr. Shockley on item number three. Okay. Moving on to item number four is the GA Group Services Agreement, Amendment 2. Mr. Nicholson will take that one again. Yes, this is an extension of the GA Group's contract. They are the lobbyist 
that uh, the authority has engaged in Bismarck for state legislature. Um, there are um, a number of items that uh, may be considered and may be uh, at of interest for the diversion authority, one being eminent domain and quick take action that might be taken by the legislature um, in uh, the next session. So this continues the contract, really providing uh, on the ground eyes and ears, and then the ability to engage the right people from the authority in any outreach that uh, is needed in Bismarck. Questions on item number four, regarding service agreement with the lobby group. All right, item number five, Grand Farms new services agreement. So this is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a, a contract to engage uh, Grand Farm through um, 2023 on the subject of autonomous mowing and uh, technology. You may recall that the Governor Burgum expressed interest and uh, encouraged Joel to uh, explore how to increase uh, technology and innovation with respect to the Diversion Authority. Uh, this is a cooperative project with the Grand Farm to leverage their work with NDDOT and other agencies as they look to uh, investigate how to use innovative technologies for maintenance of the levees and maintenance of uh, the Southern Embankment. So the, this contract extends through 2023. Uh, there is a scoping provision that would be held initially to define the specific scope and the specific dollars out of that um, budget estimate of 25000 that would be expended. So there would be a step to clarify what this specific scope and deliverables would be for those dollars. Thank you, sir. Questions? Anyone? All right. Uh, so the committee is, uh, has the option of doing, doing these one at a time. Or we Move can do to approve all items, items one through five. Thank you. Mayor Mahoney moves to approve all. Is there a second, please? Uh, just a question. Commissioner Mr. Steen. You suggested one through five. We did poll two. One would be one through oh, four sorry. and five. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Is there a second? Second, one, three, four, and five. Thank you, Commissioner Steen. has been moved and seconded to approve one, three, four, and five of the contracting actions uh, as presented by Mr. Nicholson and Mr. Shockley. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Ms. Gayhart. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mayor Carlson. Yes. Mr. Reitz. Yes. Ms. Madriga. Yes. And that is everyone. Thank you, Don. Item number eight is other business. The first item is the DA board, uh, DA board approval of the MOUs and agreement actions. Uh, it, they are in the attachments. And Mr. Shockley, we'd call on you again to address this issue. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, this uh, item is a MURA with Casserole Water Users District. Uh, this has been taken a little bit of time to get developed, but this addresses the relocation of water lines in the southern embankment area. Uh, and as a, uh, it, it's very similar to our other uh, MURAs in that uh, work would not be undertaken unless it's pursuant to a task order. However, we have worked through most all of the utility relocation. So um, based upon the negotiations with Casserole Water, uh, we agreed to a lump sum payment to Casserole Water for the relocation of their utilities. Part of this includes some utility relocations associated with their uh, pumping station that is on the wet side, so to speak, of the southern embankment. Thank you, Mr. Shockley. Questions? Anyone? I'd call for a, uh, a motion to address this one. Move to approve. Thank you, uh, Mayor Mahoney. Is there a second, please? Second. Thank you, Mayor. Question, Question, please. John, does this include the pumping station down by the pump, or yeah. is that the utilities we're talking about? Yep. Uh, I believe there's an additional cost that will be for the, there's going to be a levy built around it. Um, that's not included in this cost. Additional questions? Don, would you please call the roll on this one? 
Mayor Dirtis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Roll call. Uh, yeah. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Ms. Gayhart. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Renlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mayor Carlson. Yes. Mr. Reitz. Yes. Ms. Madruga. Yes. Has everyone. Thank you. Next order of business is a draft of the 2023 cash budget. Mr. Chairman, uh, Chairman Dardis, uh, members of the committee, before you uh, and in your packet is the second draft of the 2023 cash budget. I'm going to ask Mr. Barthel to uh, highlight the changes between draft one and draft two. Uh, you should note this is not an action item for today. This is an informational item. There will likely be another draft uh, at next meeting as this gets finalized and, and honed into what the cash needs are for 2023. So thank you. Um, just to highlight a few of the changes that we've seen. Overall, we've seen about a $20 million uptick since the, the, our previous draft. Um, a lot of this is in refinement of estimates. It's also uh, does include the uh, payment to Cass Rural Water that was included for 2023 in the MURA that uh, you just discussed. So that's about a $4 million increase there in the Southern Embankment uh, Work Package 46. Um, also included in that, there's a, an additional about $5 million in uh, utility costs and um, other costs that we're going to see in uh, utility relocations uh, next year in the Southern Embankment area. Um, there's also included in there is uh, under work package 43 Oxbow Hicks and Mbaki. Uh There's an additional $700,000 in that for a project there that they are going to be uh, completing next year. This is in the budget, in the program budget. However, we did not know the timing of it. Uh, the city is going forward with that work and uh, should see that completed next year for some roadway and uh, tying things up now that the county road 81 and 18 intersection has been improved in the Army Corps project. Um, one of the other big item, bigger items or increases, and uh, it's not, it's a slight increase in the program budget of about 300,000 that uh, Mr. Bakigard will discuss with our next item with the city of Fargo, but it all comes down to the timing of the bidding. They had to rebid an, an item that we had budgeted in the 22 cash budget that is now being pushed to the 23 cash budget because um, of the timing of they had to rebid this item. And so uh, I think bids are going to open in mid November, but we don't anticipate a notice to proceed or actual construction starting until 2023. Um, and uh, then the other uh, major actually uptick in there uh, under the work package 50 demo. Um, we did have a project come in uh, that was higher than anticipated. That's been bid and approved work package 50G uh, for property mitigation. And so that additional cost was included in the budget. Are there any other questions? Any questions that I can answer or anything that you would like more information on? Mr. Barthel? Anyone? Mr. Chairman, Mayor. You got the increased expenses. Do we have the increased revenue as well, Paul? We will balance the revenue that way. Um, once we come, we work with the city of, uh, city of Fargo, uh, Terry, and we'll work with her to, to verify and balance the uh, uh, revenue at the same way. Um, so Terry is bringing more revenue to you than you expected. Is that what you said? Well, yes, and 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 uh, actually, with the sales tax, we'll look at the sales tax revenues that we've had for this year. Project those into next year. We do have uh, actually this year is going to be I don't want to say fairly simple, but we do have the legacy bonds that are out there that we can tap into this year. Uh, so I think um, for the 2023 20, cash budget, we're sitting in a, a fairly decent position. My question is, is we've had debates on the maintenance and operating costs of maintaining the project right now. 
and there's some the city of Fargo maintains and there's some the project maintains. <clears throat> is that something, I know some of it has been delayed or is put off for some time. Is that something we could rediscuss at some time? Maybe Nathan can address that issue. Right. Um, yeah, that the operating budget, um, there's some other uh, levers and, and uh, things that we need to pull and, and work that way within the financial plan. Uh, so, but yeah, it's something that we can discuss. We actually need to discuss and, and develop a, a MOU like we've done for construction um, for operations and maintenance and long term. And then just on the contingency funds that we had set aside, how much are we into our contingency fund? As of right now, we have not tapped into the contingency funds. Um, that is something that you may see uh, coming up here in the next round or two. We do anticipate some uh, compensation events from the P3 to uh, hit the books in 2023. And so those are, uh, were covered under the compens or those compensation events were covered in our contingency budget that way. The way that we based our risk-based contingency, those were covered in that. But you would say, as you look at the project as it presently sits, we would be considered healthy? I'm not a doctor, you are, but uh, <laughs> I would consider it healthy. Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> any additional questions? Mr. Chair, just, Please. just to comment to uh, Dr. Mahoney's last question. Um, I think from a financial plan perspective, the program remains um, as healthy as it's ever been. Uh, we have, um, and as Mr. Barthel said, we're going to take a look at sales tax receipts and their percent growth and, and do a look at that kind of as a year end wrap up sometime before the end of the year. But sales tax receipts continue to exceed the base that we have in our financial plan. Um, as Mr. Barthel pointed out, we have not allocated any contingency yet. So uh, the program remains uh, affordable and payable within the sales tax revenues as planned by the financial plan. Uh, we will have we will have some discussions about uh, allocating some of that contingency for for good reason, but uh, we planned on it. And there's a, for example on the P3, there is a, a utility, an additional utility crossing of the cro of the channel that wasn't anticipated. Only place we have that in the budget is in contingency. So, not all contingency necessarily means that it was in error or something went wrong. It's just unknowns that that we're spending out of that bucket but uh, i would have to say that the financial plan is as sound as it was when we let the p3 contract and started the program despite inflation despite rising costs and all that type of thing uh, the revenues that we're collecting from sales tax still are in excess of what uh, you know the projected numbers would be so you know, it's, it's a net gain. We're so happy people from West Fargo are shopping in Fargo. Thank you, Bernie. And, and, and Bernie Ms. Michael. <laughs> Mr. Is, Chair, not to, please. Not to uh, go on and on, but um, the financing package that we've talked about often with WIFIA and the, and the work that Mr. Shockley has done has set the stage for that success in, in the, the very good financing that the authority was able to obtain and the low interest rates through those lunch and learns that Paul has so wonderfully conducted for us. There's been a number of times where we've taken a snapshot and looked at, you know, revenues versus expenses. And uh, I, as you say, it's a very affordable project yet. Uh, that's to say the least. It's, we're in a very good, good place. Any additional questions with regard to the 2023 cash budget? This is a non-actionable item. This is for information only. Uh, in, in the near future, uh, dependent upon if it's November or December. I don't think we've determined that yet as to when uh, it will take, uh, come before the full board for action on that. So, Mr. Steen, are you comfortable with the present budget, cash budget? Again? Are you comfortable with this? I know you... We've, we've had a lot of discussion on the different topics on this thing. So, yep. We're You're happy. Comfortable. Comfortable. <laughs> Healthy? <laughs> Please, Mr. Nicholson. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I have 
I have a uh, little animal on the, my shoulder kicking me that I would be remiss in pointing out that while the financial plan is healthy, that is based on the current scope. Yep. And we all have to continue to remain vigilant that we control scope and level of effort to what our budget is planning to spend. So while the program is healthy, it isn't healthy enough that we can, can you know, expand scope and do things that we didn't intend to do. So we're, we're in good shape. We still have to remain diligent. Any additional questions for Mr. Nicholson? Again, information only. Item C is the updated City of Fargo work plan for project bid in 2022. Chris Bockegaard will be uh, sharing that information with us. It's uh, on page 186 and attachment 6.0. Chris, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair, committee members. I'm here today to give you an update on, on part of the Fargo work plan for our project. Uh, this is in relation to a project where we're fixing some erosion uh, and placing some protection along South University Drive in Fargo. Uh, again, we were here last in July where we had updated the scope of work for this project. Subsequent to that, the city did uh, um, complete the project and put it out for bids. Uh, we did only receive one bidder, and it was quite a bit higher than our estimate. Uh, the city ultimately rejected those that bid, and... Uh, uh, went to work and did some forensics and uh, learned that part of that reason the bids were so high is for, for two primary reasons. One, the risk of flooding during construction, uh, since this work is right along the riverbank, and also just the overall completion date for the project was a little tighter than some contractors could fit into their workload. Uh, so the city did go back and rework um, their plan, and they have uh, added a provision to allow if we have a major flood um, over 30 feet and the river stays high for over three weeks while the contractors there are working if that means they have to leave the site and stop work uh, we have uh, put a provision in the plan that allows them to be compensated for that extra demobilization and mobilization and then we also extended the completion date out into into june of 2024 which allows a lot more flexibility for contractors to work this into their schedule um, along with that, Nathan assured me that the, the city also added provisions to not have this project start and stop that whole time. So once the contractor comes on on the site and starts working, they need to continue work and progress it to be completed. So um, part of um, the estimation that's being done is to add the provision for paying for the MOB and DMOB. Um, uh, we, we have estimated that we'll need about another potential $330,000 into the project budget to account for that. Uh, again, that payment only is made if we have a flood during construction, so there's certainly a potential that we wouldn't need to make that payment, um, but one provision that we do feel needs to be added. So uh, with that, asking if we could increase the budget on that project from $2.8 million to $3.1 um, as a part of the overall city work plan. And again, I think Paul's got a motion, a proposed motion on the screen there if that's acceptable to the committee. Thank you, Mr. Bakkegaard. Any questions? So this is a net increase of uh, $330,000. That's correct, Mr. Chair. A total of $3,135,000. Questions, Mr. Bakkegaard? Yes, Mayor. Chairman. Are there any other areas along what we've built so far we have to restabilize? Do we have any other areas of concern along the Fargo flood protection? Not that protection? I'm aware of. I don't know, Nathan, anything that's on your radar. I, I'm not aware of any mayor, so. Thank you. We'll call on Nathan's going to come. He's coming to the mic. Come on <laughs> up, Nathan. So yeah, good question. Uh, that was a concern of ours, if there was other areas. We actually hired a consultant a couple of years ago to go look at some other pinch points, and we're continually monitoring those with some data collection devices to make sure no other areas are moving, and to date, no other areas have moved. So it's something we were concerned of and are actively monitoring. And Nathan, would you say if we have a drought, we move more, or if we have too much rain, moisture into the, the mud? Is it a drought that makes it more vulnerable, or is it? We have seen more movement in the riverbanks when the river does get low. Yeah. That usually does result in the banks tend to move at more at that point, especially if you have 
like this past year when the river was up high for a long period of time in spring, saturate those banks for a while, and now when it's really low, there's more weight in that bank and potentially could pull some soil down. So we have seen more movement typically during dry periods. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any additional questions? This is an actionable item. So, and you can see that the proposed motion in there. So, uh, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chair, Peterson motion. Thank you. Commissioner Peterson, is there a second, please? I'll second it. Been moved and seconded. Thank you, Commissioner Pipcorn. Been moved and seconded to approve the resolution for the procedure of requesting that the City of Fargo undertake a development comprehensive project, uh, erosion protection and bank stabilization for an increased budget of 330000 to a total of 3135000 We have a motion and we have a second. Is there any discussion? Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis? Yes. Dr. Mahoney? Aye. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Ms. Gayhart? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Redlinger? Yes. Mr. Steen? Yes. Mr. Pepcorn? Aye. Mayor Carlson? Yes. Mr. Reitz? Yes. Ms. Madriga? Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. That concludes today's business. Is there anybody from the Finance Committee that has anything that they'd like to bring forward on an on agenda item? No. Our next meeting will be November 16th. I have a question for the Finance Committee. We were always the last uh, committee that would meet on Wednesdays, you know. They'd start at 3 and then 3 th or whatever, 2, 3, and 4, I think it was. And so is 4 o'clock still an acceptable time, being there's not meetings before us? I'm not advocating that we change the time. I'm just I'm asking the committee. You know, we had to wait for our turn, basically, to, to use the uh, city facilities here. Mr. Chair, we were at 3. We flipped to accommodate Commissioner Grinberg to 4. Just saying. Okay. Well... Give it some thought, and if you have any uh, suggestions or concerns about that, we'll, uh, we'll discuss it uh, next month. So, again, our next meeting is November 16th. I thank you for your time. We stand adjourned.